Hi there! In today's video, I'm going to show you how I painted my friend Flora in oils following the selective start and using a basic grid to help with the composition. Welcome to my art channel, Shelly J. Cox. For my palette, I'll be using the following oil paints. Titanium White, Yellow Okra, Cadmium Red Light, Quinacridone Magenta, Sap Green, French Ultramarine Blue, and Ivory Black. You can see the decals in the description below. I've mixed most of the colors I'll need and arranged them with my darks at the top of the palette, then mid-tones, and lights on the bottom. Now I'm ready to start painting. Okay, with Selective Start, you're gonna pick a spot, and that's where you're gonna start. I've decided to start with an eye. You can see here I have yellow grid lines on my white canvas. The grid lines are just gonna help me keep the composition in place and make sure that everything's built out far enough. I tend to paint a little tight. My features can be a little small at times. This will keep me on the right path, at least at the start. Once everything's kind of put in place, then I'll be good to go. Okay, I'm gonna keep laying down brush strokes and building out the eye. My reference is on my computer screen to the left of my canvas, and I just keep looking over and comparing the shapes and the colors, and I try to lay each shape and color down on the canvas in the right place, in the right size, and in the right color. You'll see me using my proportion tool to check the sizes of some of the features as I go along. Um, I just use it as a one-to-one. -one. The actual size of the eye and face is the actual size of my reference shown on my computer, so it's one-to-one -one sizing. Now that the eye is in place, I can use it as a comparative anchor to the rest of the features that will be coming along as I build out the face. It's really nice to have the palette colors already pre-mixed. Uh, that way I don't have to take much time mixing colors. I do mix some as I go based on what I need at the time. But for the most part, everything's ready. I can just dip my brush in and lay that mark down and keep going. Okay, you can see now that the light source is coming from the top left. So our modeling is gonna have to show that as we go along. It's a lot like sculpting. You just wanna build that form and creating highlights and shadows and then midtones to really give the illusion of a 3D face. In creating my reference photo, my friend Flora, she came to my house. I had the lights set up, the camera was ready to go. We took some photos and then later in Photoshop, I went in and I played with the lighting. I added the flower crown after the fact. She did not have that on during the photo shoot. And the background was a bit different. Uh, just changed the coloring and made it a little more dark with some contrast to really help bring her face forward. But making the photo yourself really helps in getting a reference that you're gonna be happy to work with Sometimes uh, in the past I've taken photos or found photos that, I, that weren't originally intended for a painting and I always run into difficulties. Taking your own reference material and knowing that you're gonna use it for a painting is gonna help you in the long run avoid a lot of problems, especially with lighting. All right, we're painting the nose. 
So there's going to be a light side, the one I'm working on now, and then there's going to be a dark side. It's going to be on the other side of the face. The eye is going to be in shadow, the other half of the nose, and there'll be a little bit of a cast shadow underneath. And we really want to capture that so that we have a good 3D form creating the nose. You can imagine that the nose is just a basic triangular shape and you picture in your mind how the light is going to fall on the triangle if it's against the face in that position. And that's going to help you in painting the lights and the darks correctly. I keep checking the measurements because I really do want this to look like my friend Flora. So it's really important that the features are in the correct place, that they're correct in the correct shape, and that they're not distorted in any way, or it's just gonna be off. You're gonna be like, eh, it kinda looks like her. But I want this to be a true, actual portrait of my friend, so I'm gonna keep double checking that the features and the measurements and of everything is correct. I love painting the highlights on noses. I don't know what it is. It's just really fun. <laughs> All right, you can just keep watching while I finish up some of the light side of the face and then we'll move into the dark side. Okay, moving into the darks. So you have to be careful with photo references when you're painting the darks. A lot of times the photo will show the dark areas much more dark than they would be in real life. So to lighten them up, it helps if you add a little bit of warmth. And you can also do that in Photoshop. Just bring your shadows up a tad, but not too much because I do really want to keep this very much uh, in the shadow with a strong highlight coming into that light area. And as I'm painting the darks, I'm only dipping my brush into the dark row at the top of my palette. I know that if I'm painting in a dark area, that my paint must come from this area of my palette. Okay, let's watch for a little bit as I paint in some of the darks.
All right, the top of part of the face is looking pretty good. I'm excited to get into these lips. I like uh, sculpting them and showing the shape of how it folds in and then comes back out and how the light hits it to really show the fullness. I'm not painting things, I'm painting light. I want to be sure with the lips to keep the edges soft. I don't like any harsh outlined lips where it looks like you have lipstick liner on. I really want the edges of the lip to just blend smoothly into the skin tones. See how the top lip is darker? The light's not hitting it. Whereas the bottom lip's getting a lot of light. So it's gonna have the light pink and whitish highlights to help round that bottom lip out. When I'm painting like this, I keep hearing in my head, I don't know, I must have read it or a teacher said it somewhere, how John Singer Sargent used the least amount of brush strokes possible to create his form. So I'm always thinking to myself, okay, I wanna paint these lips, for instance, using as few brush strokes as possible, and then see how they look. You can always go back in and add a few finishing touches, but it's nice to just kinda of get in there and lay those colors down, show that shape, and leave it alone. <laughs> Here's where I go back in. I just felt like the contrast could be punched up a little bit. So I wanted to add a little bit of darkness in between there. Hey, if you're getting some value out of this oil painting tutorial, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you know when I have my next video ready. And if you want to see more of my art, check out my Instagram. My handle is at sjcoxart. So if you saw my last video, you know I have a clothing brand that features my artwork. Grab a cool t-shirt or maybe you'd like a pair of our leggings. There's all kinds of great fashion from tops to dresses. And that's on my website sjcsportcouture.com This is one of my favorite parts. I love seeing how the hair comes around and frames out the face. It really kind of brings it to life at this point. Flora's got dark hair too, so that's going to play nice into that shadow side. During the photo shoot, we did have a fan, but it wasn't blowing the hair quite as much as I've taken the artistic license to do here. I really love the way it's going to help frame out the face and pull your eye through the painting. And as I like to remind myself, I am the master of my painting, so I'm going to paint it how I want. Okay, things are shaping up. Let's put in some background and that'll help us judge the colors of the face and the lightness and darkness that's going through the hair. Just help give us a better sense of the whole painting. And then I have an exciting uh, little trick I'm gonna show you once I get the background painted in. So keep watching.
All right, flower crown. This is where I take my artistic license because there was no flower crown during the photo. I decided I wanted to put in some of her Polynesian heritage and uh, add that nice little touch with the flowers at the top. So here's a fun fact. Flower crowns originated in ancient Greece. They became a symbol of love and fertility. They continue to adorn the heads of women from all over the world. Remember the 60s? All the hippie chicks had flowers in their hair. And today, most brides having tropical weddings will wear some type of flower crown. They're just so beautiful, I think. I'm painting in the under colors of the flower crown. I want to just get some color laid down and then this being the lightest part of the flower crown will have the whiter, lighter flowers in it. And then as I round over into the shadow side, I'm going to put in some dark undertones and then that's going to be the darker flowers. It's interesting, even though the flower crown is made out of white flowers, I'm using very little white to paint her crown. So I had put in a lot of the dark parts of her hair and now I want to come in and put the highlights on top of the darks. These brush strokes must be bold. You can't be timid here. There's got to be bravura in each stroke. Okay. Now I'm going to roll the background and take it right across and down through the hair. I think this is going to make the painting have the look of a vintage photograph, one that perhaps had been folded or carried around in a pocket and then found years later. It was an experiment. I have uh, not used this technique before. I was really pleased with the results. I'll definitely use it again. All right, I'm gonna go back into the face and polish up some of the skin brush strokes. I like leaving the looks of the brush strokes, but in some areas I do like to blend a little bit more than others just to give it a nice contrast with the rest of the painting. I want the face to be as realistic as possible, but I don't want to kill or lose too much of the beauty of the initial brush strokes. So it's a fine line. It's sort of an ebb and flow of taking some strokes, keeping some strokes. This is day two of the painting process. 
So the paint has stayed very wet on the surface, allowing me to continue to work wet into wet day two. This is gonna keep the paints mixing the layers together nicely. So I'm going back day two and just putting in some finishing touches. I'll add a little more contrast in areas and also I'm going to put the details into the flower crown today. If you watch closely here as I paint in some of the details, you'll see I take the thicker white opaque paint at times and I touch it to the canvas and then I swirl my brush to help give an edge to the flower. So even as the light hits the painting, it's gonna create some shadows and contrast just from that thick of paint. I'm gonna keep the strongest detailed flowers in the lightest area of the crown. And then as it rolls into the darks, you're gonna lose some of the detail. You're not gonna see it because it's gonna be in the shadow. Okay, flower crown is finished. We'll just put a few of the finishing touches and then we will start moving across the face just to finalize some of the painting. Looking to just finish it up. It's 
looking pretty good here. I think the lightness is spot on and the tones and the darkness, that's exactly what I wanted. All right, I'm gonna check the transitions rolling from the light into the shadow is going to be areas where there's some intense color. And I just wanna make sure that we have that happening, especially here in the nose. It's a lot of blood that comes to the surface of the skin in the nose area, and that's really gonna help give it lifelike appearance. All right, here she is, Flora. I think it looks great. I'm happy with the results. I'll let you know how she likes it once I give it to her. Hey, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.